topic on equilibrium we're going to discuss is titration curves. That's why I switched to this side, slide, because that's what we're going to talk about. All right, so we've already done this in the lab, so you know where this is going. What we're able to do is we are able to uh, use titration curves to determine the Ka's and pKs of acids and bases. So in Gen Chem 1, we did a uh, titration, and it's the same setup where you have the hydroxide, the base, uh, in the burette, and you slowly add it to the acid sample till the acid is completely neutralized, and you've reached the equivalence point, and then you high-fived your lab partner, and then you did the calculations, and that's the experiment. Remember that? Yep. Okay. So... That is one point that we are going to use. We're not going to use an indicator. We're going to measure the pH, but we do need to remember what the equivalence point is. That's going to be, that's going to be good. So the equivalence point, and let's start over here. What did the equivalence point mean? Anybody remember? Something's equal. What's equal? I'll give you that hint. The OH and the H plus. So the acid, the amount of acid present, you've added enough hydroxide to equal the amount of H plus. So yeah, the moles of hydroxide, I don't want to put an equal sign there, so I'll turn that into an arrow. Moles of hydroxide equal the moles of the H plus. Equals. Equivalent, equal. The moles of the hydroxide are equivalent to the H plus. Okay, so that point is going to be uh, important in a uh, titration curve. All right, so you've already uh, did one lab, but in general, this is what they look like. So what you do is you plot volume as a function. Nope, you plot pH as a function of volume. My bad. And the actual shape and what the uh, pH, uh, the titration is going to look like is going to be different. So what we're going to do is, for this first one, we're going we're to titrate a weak acid with a strong base. So when I write it like that, that means the strong base is my titrant. That's what goes in the uh, burette and my weak acid is in the sample. So when I say a weak acid, strong base titration, weak acid in the sample, strong base is in the burette, that's what I'm adding to it. Because I'm also, we're also gonna talk, we can do a strong acid, strong base titration. We could do a weak base, strong acid titration. Or a, uh, or we could reverse it, strong base, strong acid titration. And a couple more. All right, but if we're doing a weak acid, strong base titration, here's what the general curve looks like. Okay. First, the pH is going to be low because we've got weak acid in our uh, sample. All right. So we'll start out maybe around here. Depending on the concentration, depending on how strong the acid is, higher or lower. But it will be acidic. Then the uh, pH is going to start to go up because we're adding hydroxide, neutralizing our uh, weak acid in the sample. And then it's going to shoot up really fast, and then it will level off again. So that's the general shape of a titration curve for a weak acid, strong base titration. Now what we're eventually going to need to do is we're going to find the Ka based on the fact that, we already know, that uh, here's our, um, when the concentration, well, let's write down our equation first. So we've got our weak acid, or, ha, huh, see, we knew I was going to do it plus the hydroxide, it's being neutralized. And that makes water 
and what's left? A minus, the uh, conjugate base, right? All right, so the equivalence point, say you started out with one mole of Ha, okay, one mole of HA, you're going to add one mole of hydroxide, okay? That P, that point is going to be somewhere where that really jumps up, okay? So it's going to be somewhere in there. I usually mark where it really starts to rise and where it starts to tail off and just say somewhere in the middle, that's going to be our equivalence point. At halfway to the equivalence point, something really uh, nice happens. So if we start out with one mole of HA, and halfway to the equivalence point, we've only neutralized half of it, so we've got 0.5 moles left. That's going to make 0.5 moles of A minus. So halfway to the equivalence point, The concentration of HA equals concentration of A minus. And from the Henderson Hasselbach equation, which states that pH equals pKA plus the log of A minus all over HA something really awesome happens then. So if the concentration of HA equals A minus, no matter what the concentration is, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0.7, how much longer before that gets really awkward? Like what do you think I can get up to? Like three, nine? You think I can? 99. I bet you people would walk out about 50 <laughs> to start packing up. Okay, so no matter what these numbers are, if they're equal to each other, that ratio would be 1, right? 0.2 over 0.2, 0.3 over 0.3, 0.4, especially if I'm going by 0.1s all the way to 99. Wow. Okay, so that log of 1, that ratio would be 1, and what's the log of 1? 0, 0. If you don't believe, if you believe us, uh, put that in calculator. So that is zero. So this basically goes away. So at the halfway point, the really nice thing is that the pH equals the pKa. And so what you do, if this is, say that equivalence point happens at 20, you go down to 10, follow that up to your uh, titration curve, then follow that over there, that's your pKa. And we'll get to do that. You've already done that a lot, but we'll do some more examples here. Okay, so that's pretty much why we're talking about titration curves now. Basically, they uh, can, um, a really useful part of, the, of them is to calculate the uh, Ka's and PKA's of weak acids, and KBs and PKB's of weak bases.